Good evening and thank you for joining me on Black News Tonight. I'm Mark Lamont Hill. Doorbell camera video of the shooting of Zulu Prince Lindani Miani has been released to the public. Prince Miani was shot in Honolulu back in April and the footage shows that he arrived at a house, took off his shoes, entered the home, and then quickly left after his presence confused those who were inside the house. He repeatedly apologized and police claimed that he was violently attacked by officers, leaving one hospital, I'm sorry, that he violently attacked the officers, leaving one hospitalized with a concussion. Police later released short clips of body camera footage showing the prince ignoring commands to get on the ground outside the home that he entered. Lawyers say they are still evaluating full unredacted body camera footage for the period that occurred after the shooting. Police reform faces an uphill battle. A bill that would set a statewide use of force policy for policing in Wisconsin is now in jeopardy. The bill also creates a duty to report and a duty to intervene in certain situations where a law enforcement officer sees another officer failing to comply with the statewide use of force standard. It makes a misdemeanor for a police officer who intentionally fails to report non-compliant use of force. The bill, however, has been moved to the end of the calendar pending a possible amendment. The Wisconsin Assembly also voting on bills banning transgender athletes from participating in girls and women's sports. The first bill covering trans college students passed on party lines in a vote 59 to 38. The second bill banning trans girls from participating in girls team sports for grades K-12 also passed 59 to 38. Both bills now head to the Senate. Again, this is yet another example of the right creating solutions that are in search of problems. There is no widespread case of trans women and girls infiltrating sports and creating unfair advantages. They frame this as an equity or justice issue for girls, but this isn't about girls. This isn't about trying to stop unfairness. Again, there's no need for this. If you looked at the number of trans athletes that are entering sports with, that are creating competitive imbalances, the number is infinitesimal. So what are they doing? It's just like critical race theory. It's just like 1619 Project. It's just like all the moral panics that have occurred in the last three, four, five decades that are stirred up by the right. They create problems to make you feel like we're losing our country, we're losing our values, we're losing our whiteness, we're losing our evangelical Christianity, we're losing our freedom to be racist, we're losing our freedom to be transphobic. And in doing so, they're getting people into the polls for 2022. They're getting people into the polls for 2024. This is not about those issues. This is about a bigger political play. That's why you see this happening all around the country in systematic fashion. Anyway, let's move on. Vice President Kamala Harris met with a group of Texas Democrats who succeeded in killing a Republican election overhaul bill last month. Harris is leading the administration's effort to promote voting rights across the nation. Many argued the bill would have made it harder for voters of color to cast their ballots in the state. The vice president attacked the legislation and similar bills, saying that they intrude on a constitutional right. When we look at what has happened in Texas, we look at what's happening around the country, I think it's important to remember we talk about the right to vote. um, And the right to vote is a given. All citizens have the right to vote constitutionally. It is their right. What we are seeing are examples of an attempt to interfere with that right. A senior administration official said Harris's Friday trip to Atlanta uh, as part of a vaccine push will also feature an event that focuses on voting rights. Just moments ago, the House voted in favor of making Juneteenth a national federal holiday, 415 to 14. I gotta find out who those 14 people were. Democrats are now hopeful that the measure will be signed into law by Saturday. Juneteenth commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. It's already observed as a state or ceremonial holiday in 47 states, as well as the District of Columbia. When signed into law, it will become the country's 11th federal holiday. A buried segment profiling James Baldwin's play, The Amen Corner, is now coming to light. 
The interview took place back in 1979 with the late Sylvia Chase. 2020 producer Joseph Lovett got a chance to do a profile piece on Baldwin, and it shows rare footage of Baldwin relaxed inside of his home, surrounded by family. But the interview was never aired. And when we when they asked Lovett why, he, he said, who wants to listen to a black gay has been? Wow. Lovett is set to discuss the interview further on June 24th during a free virtual panel.